Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, your post-race edition for the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix, a race in which tyres played a crucial role. Doesn't make it sound as fascinating and as thrilling as it actually was. Thanks, Greg. He needs the tyres. Uh, because Ferrari won two on the grid after Max Verstappen had his pole position taken away for ignoring those yellow flags through the last turn in qualifying after Valtteri Bottas crashed. So it was Leclerc on pole, Vettel second. And they led away while behind chaos ensued. Lewis had a little bit of a squirm. Max had to take avoiding action and Max fell back through the field. Ultimately tried to pass Valtteri Bottas and did pass Valtteri Bottas into the stadium section. But the contact that he made with him through there left him with a flat tire and falling back to last place. So for Max, arguably the fastest man of the entire weekend his was a day of damage limitation ferrari though at the front of the field had a decision to make and ultimately they decided to split their strategy they put charles leclerc on a two-stop strategy even sebastian vettel who was really comfortable on his tires on the one-stop strategy lewis hamilton meanwhile was struggling his tires were going and going fast he pitted just shy of 50 laps to go to the end of the race and he didn't think it was the right decision. He didn't know how he was going to make the tyres last. To be honest, I don't think anybody knew how Lewis Hamilton would make those tyres last, particularly when his first couple of laps had to be blistering fast to stop Sebastian Vessel from coming in to cover Hamilton's stop. Hamilton did the job he needed to. Those two laps, the times went in. Vettel's advantage gone, so Vettel stayed out. When he finally made his one and only stop, he was blasting up to Hamilton, Hamilton under pressure, but Hamilton somehow had enough left in his tyres to keep Vettel behind him. Bottas still on the, on the one-stop strategy, he's coming through as well, and Leclerc stops late, he's on the fresh rubber, he's trying to come back, couldn't make it happen. Hamilton somehow turned a weekend, which should have been about Red Bull, which should have been about Ferrari, on a track where Mercedes have never been that great, sealed a brilliant win. It was a fantastic race. It was a fantastic drive from Lewis Hamilton. Arguably one of his best of the year. Um, he isn't quite world champion. Bottas's third place means that the, that the fight for the title does go on to Austin. Uh, but a great afternoon, a great, really exciting race. Fascinating, so many permutations. Uh, and that's just the top three. Here are the top three. Valtteri Bottas third, Sebastian Vettel second, Lewis Hamilton finally at this track, a race winner. We started fourth, uh, third, sorry. And we came into this weekend, a track that we always struggled at. Um, but we kept our heads down, really started to try and chip away at it, but we didn't have the pace in qualifying. Uh, then, then we get here and uh, I had the start and I obviously got Seb pushed me onto the grass at the start. And I don't know if it was him that damaged my car or, or Max, but then Max hit me in turn one and then we went straight. I mean, geez, it was such commotion. I nearly, took, I nearly hit Seb when I got hit from Max coming over the grass, trying to keep everything together and remain composed after that was not easy. Uh, and I think just then I knew that the car was damaged because the car was behaving a bit funny. So I really had to change my driving style to try and make it work. And then I was chasing Seb down and I was like, I'm coming for you, man. <laughs> and, uh, but I, honestly, I just think it's, it never gets old. It always feels like the first time and it was, a, it was a damn hard race today. But I think collectively we did such a great job. The team did an amazing job. Strategy wise, it was a bit risky, I think, stopping that early, but I had to make it work, and that's my job. So, and you dedicated the win to Bono. Can you just talk about how important that relationship is? Yeah, Bono's at home, uh, resting and recovering. Um, and I've been with him seven years, and he's been with, by my side every single race. And whilst he wasn't here physically, he was here, uh, you know, in spirit. And he was on the radio with us uh, in the engineering, we were talking about setup, we were texting all weekend. So he was very much hands-on, but Marcus did a fantastic job. You know, I really have to take my hat off to him. It's not easy to step into Bono's boots and also to work in that position for, for me. You know, not that I'm difficult to work with, but the fact is there's a lot of demand, you know, and he took it like a duck to water and worked so hard. So big thank you to him and to Dom, who, who both did uh, just a stellar job. A strong result out there. I know it wasn't quite the victory. Uh, where do you think the race kind of turned and where do you think the kind of victory was lost? Well, I think Mercedes did well, so congrats to them. I think Lewis drove well and managed the tyres well. So uh, I think uh, we really tried everything. We tried the two, the two and, the, and the one stop, but uh, he got just massively lucky, you know, fitting the tyres so early. 
not hitting a cliff. I mean, it's like a, if you're a woman on this planet and you have this guy, you know, giving you a massage, like when he's giving you a massage, like he's treating the tires, it's just pure magic. So, oh, really well done to him that he made the tires last. So. That made the difference. Were you surprised at how well the ties lasted for Philip? Yeah, I think we didn't expect them to last that long. That's why we were not panicking to, to really try and stay ahead. And uh, I think when they fitted the heart, obviously you might as well take the gamble. If it didn't work, then it just comes in another time and it doesn't work. But in that case, as I said, he, he did well and made it work. After a tough day yesterday, was that kind of damage limitation for you today? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, considering the, the what happened yesterday, I think it was a good day and I really feel it was pretty pretty strong race from, from my side personally um, where I started with a bad start still still good recover into in the third obviously with an ideal strategy by the team but also just felt the, the pace was good on, on both stints and um, could really manage the tires quite well so for that I'm, I'm pleased and much better feeling than yesterday. You were closing on Sebastian quite a lot in that final stint you think there was a real chance you could have got him? Uh, I was really trying everything I could but just couldn't get close enough. They are still so quick on the straights that um, it is so hard to overtake. But uh, I was trying everything I could, and uh, I think third was the maximum for me from where I started. So that was your top three. Charles Leclerc could arguably have won today's Grand Prix, but the strategy just didn't work out for him. He pushed so hard coming out in fourth place on the two-stop strategy, trying to make it work, made a couple of little but crucial mistakes that ultimately, I think, cost him dear in the end. Uh, he finished fourth, not where he wanted to be, having been on pole position. I think it's easy to blame it on the strategy. I think it's more blaming it on me again, because uh, I believe that uh, I, I should have made it clear uh, on the radio after the first in that I could go longer, which I didn't, and then it compromised our race, because then we took the decision uh, with what I felt in the car, and, uh, and Seb definitely felt the things better than I did, and on that I need to, to improve. Looking ahead to the, at the rest of the race, did you feel like you had the pace to catch back up or did you just not have enough in the tyres? Did you realise that? On the medium, I did. on the second stint of the medium, I didn't feel good. On the first stint, I felt very good. And on the hard, I, I felt uh, very good too. But uh, unfortunately, any time I was getting any close to a one car in front, I would get a lot of other eating. So then it was very difficult. Coming into this weekend, popular opinion and wisdom said that this was going to be a fight between Red Bull and Ferrari. Certainly after qualifying, Ferrari were making overtures about the fact that Max Verstappen and that Red Bull car were the fastest package in the fields. But it didn't work out. As we've already said, Max fell to the back of the field, having picked up a puncture uh, early on in the race. And from that point on, it was damage limitation for him. He fought valiantly and he really did get his elbows out and go for it. Um, just didn't quite work out for him on the day. Alex Albon could could have taken his first Formula One podium today, but his first stop of a two-stop strategy dropped him behind Carlos Sainz, and the time that he lost in that battle ultimately put pay to any chance he had of fighting for the podium. This was a weekend, and this was a race that Red Bull could have won, so there can only be, I would imagine, uh, disappointment and frustration in the Red Bull camp at the end of this weekend. Started off pretty good, pace was not too bad as well. And then, um, yeah, it was a bit strange actually. Uh, I don't think we had the pace for the two one, one stop. Um, but we need to check because actually some bits were good, some bits weren't so good. Um, and yeah, just thinking about it, um, we'll have to have a, a deeper, deeper understanding because I think yeah, by the time we, we did the two stops, we were always coming out in traffic. I think I lost a lot of time with Carlos. Uh, and then, yeah, it was always trying to chase back. But the problem is, is when you're yeah, pushing a bit too much, the tyres overheat so quickly. Um, and yeah, it was a bit of a cycle, but um, yeah, I mean, in terms of everything, it was a good race for me. I think my race pace wasn't too bad, so uh, quite happy. Tricky start and then a great fight back. Can you just talk us through it? Uh, yeah, I think uh, first lap was very unfortunate. I had to avoid action, so I had to go onto the, onto the grass. Um, and then, uh, of course, with Valtteri, I went up on the inside and uh, when I was alongside him, I, I realized he was uh, he, uh, he just wanted to make his corner, so I guess he didn't see me and then uh, clipped my, my rear tire. But yeah, that, of course, ruined my race. I, uh, I asked if I had a puncture and then, of course, on the straight it happened. And, but then you have to do the whole lap with a puncture, which, of course, costs you a lot of, uh, a lot of time. Um, but yeah, I think after that, we had a good fight back. P6 was definitely the maximum we could do with that. 
but the pace still on, on the tyre, which had to last 65 laps, was, uh, was very good. Mexico has never been kind to Racing Point or Force India, as was, which is a shame for Sergio Perez. Um, he said at the start of the weekend he just wants a car that would go well here. Um, they qualified where they hoped to be. Perez P11, it gave him free choice of tyres, free choice of strategy for the race. But with a car that we know isn't that suited to this track, and yet Perez, who was actually really emotional before the race in the stadium section, he almost sort of burst into tears in there, possibly driven by that emotion, driven by the, the cheers, and it's not just cheers, roars of the fans here. Every time he put on a move, this place erupted. It was, I mean, sort of the hairs on your on your arm, on the back of your neck, standing up. Amazing. Um, he came home seventh. Seventh! Best of the rest after the top three teams in a car that is no way the fourth best car around this track. Hell of a drive from Sergio Perez. Uh, difficult day for Lance Stroll in P12. But Checo Perez, arguably, actually maybe inarguably, drive of the day. It was just a perfect weekend overall. Uh, not just today, yesterday. We very much maximised uh, the performance. We did everything we possibly could, so I'm very satisfied. I'm very happy with today's. Now, after qualifying, both Renault drivers were frustrated, but particularly Daniel Ricciardo, who felt that he hadn't he hadn't done enough for his team after they had worked tirelessly, having lost all of FP3 uh, in the morning. He'd overdriven the car. He'd not gotten enough out of himself, and uh, yeah, very angry, very frustrated with himself. In the race today, he drove sublimely uh, making his first set tires last longer than anybody else he came home uh, well well within the points Nico Hulkenberg well he had an interesting race as well came home 10th although actually came home in the barrier after Danny Kofiat punted him at the last corner he carried on and made it across the line only to retire shortly after sort of dribbling over the line um, but then Danny Kofiat was handed a penalty so uh, yeah Nico Hulkenberg moves up to 10th place. Uh, so it was Ricardo in P8, Hulkenberg in P10. Uh, a really good day for Renault ultimately after what looked like it could have been quite a disappointing weekend. Yeah, it was, it was a fun one. I mean, well, fun. It was lonely for the most part, but uh, I, I knew the objective from the start was to go long. And already after yesterday, I was pretty set on starting on a hard tyre. I thought more's, more um, others would have done it, especially cars behind me, but I think I was the only one in the end. So, um, but it was good. We had aw what? awesome pace towards the end of that stint. Uh, then with the medium, uh, we had pace, but not. It, I thought Perez would have been easy money. Um, wasn't. Obviously, we saw in a turn one, it wasn't wasn't easy money at all. But uh, so yeah, I actually I crossed the line pretty frustrated at the end because I thought we would have had him and, and had a good seventh. Um, and at the time, you know, Max wasn't too far in front, but uh, yeah, in the end, eighth. I was just saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, in the end, uh, eighth. So. Seventh would have been nicer, but let's say we kept the Mexicans happy with uh, leaving Perez in front. Up until a few seconds before the checkered flag, it was all looking pretty good. Uh, and then you had that incident with Danny. Can you just talk us through what happened there? Yeah, that was P9, but that was also not really that great, to be honest. I think strategy-wise, uh, yeah, we, we, we didn't really hit it on the nail today. We just stopped a bit too early, too keen. Um, and then the second stint was very long and, and difficult in the end with, with tires that were dying on me. The last lap, yeah, just racing with Danny. I mean. Obviously, he does push me uh, into the wall. I left uh, significant space on the inside, and uh, he's trying, you know, which, which you have to as a racing driver. So, just one of these things in racing. Um, yeah. It looked like it was going to be a good weekend for Toro Rosso in their battle for fifth in the Constructors' Championship. Uh, the battle with Renault and Racing Point. It looked like they, were, they had the potential, certainly, for a really good tally of points. Both drivers making it through into Q3. But. Of course, they had to start on the soft tyre, having made it through to Q3 on that soft tyre, meaning they were always going to have to stop early, meaning it was always going to be a difficult afternoon. But Pierre Gasly, sick as a dog, as Pierre Gasly, uh, with the bug that was going around this paddock, hit over 160 people. Not pretty. Um, he fought like an absolute lion today and came home in the points. Ninth place for Pierre Gasly. Over the line, Danny Kvyat was in the top 10 as well. But as we've already heard, had that little dink with Nico Hulkenberg through the final corner that put Nico into the wall. Danny, though, given a penalty after the race and dropped back to P11. You've got to try it, though, haven't you? Hey, Pierre. Uh, firstly, how are you feeling? Not, not so good. A bit better than, a bit better than yesterday. Uh, but yeah, it was quite a, quite a long day. 
Um, in terms of the pace of the car, how did it feel? Well, I think in the end uh, we could not really do better than that with the option sire. Uh, the beginning was really difficult, and uh, yeah, I think we can be pleased with the final result. So uh, it's just a shame we, we lost the points with Daniel because for the, the team championship against Racing Point uh, is not ideal. But um, yeah, on my side, uh, for sure, I wasn't 100% of my capacity since yesterday. But uh, yeah, I think we can be pleased with the result. After the disqualification of the two Renaults in the Japanese Grand Prix, McLaren are pretty much assured of fourth place in the Constructors' Championship. Coming into this weekend, though, they said, look, we're not taking our foot off the gas. We've got to keep pushing. We've got to keep fighting all the way to the end of the year. And in qualifying, they looked mega. Uh, Carlos Sainz saying for the first time, we were able to approach it like a top team. You know, we tried to go through on the medium into Q3. Didn't quite work out. I had to do the soft. And so they kind of knew that the race today was going to be a little bit hard for them, starting on that soft tyre. You have to pit relatively early on. When they did make that first pit stop, it all fell to pieces for Lando Norris. Front left wasn't secured, stopped before the end of the pit lane. Team ran down to get him, pulled him back, got the wheel back on again. But ultimately, uh, yeah, not, not, not the race for him. He retired. And then Carlos Sainz, who was at one point battling towards uh, the podium places in the early laps of the race, just dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped out of the points. Questions about how a weekend that had looked so good for McLaren turned into something so appallingly horrible. I cannot explain it at the moment. It's, it's been a very frustrating afternoon because uh, I kept it fighting through a whole race, but uh, unfortunately, after such a great start and managing pretty well the soft tire, managing to get it to lap 15, 16, which was the target, immediately I felt uh, we had no rear grip on the heart as soon as we put it, and I just started going backwards. Every overtake that they did to me, it was a step in the wrong direction with the tire, and um, yeah, we lost pretty much the race in that scene. So, yet when you've been battling Lewis at the start, you haven't often got him. You got him today. Is that something you can take some encouragement from? Uh, it was a good start. Uh, uh, another one, you know, it's been a few now that we keep fighting the top guys, but unfortunately today we didn't have the pace to kind of hold them off or play a bit with them. But uh, it's a shame, but at the same time, you know, we've had so many strong weekends and so many strong race days that at some point during the year it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. It's getting darker. Spots of rain. Why is it always like an hour after the race that the rain comes? That might have helped the Ferraris. Might not have helped Alfa Romeo, who had a hideous day. Um, Giovinazzi came home 14th, Raikkonen retired. Surprising, actually, that it wasn't Giovinazzi that retired, given that in his pit stop, the right rear hadn't have been attached properly, but they said he could go. So he drove forward, and the whole car just went flump, and amazing that it wasn't damaged more. Um, and then he was actually able to take the checkered flag but a horrible weekend for Alfa Romeo, um, really not, not one for them. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the beginning of the race was not too bad. I was uh, you know, behind Re Renault and, uh, and Racing Point. After that, yeah, the pit stop was uh, for sure compromised the race. You know, I was uh, by myself uh, uh, most of the race. So yeah, we need to just understand uh, how was the pace because uh, Austin is just next week. So we need to understand better and try to improve and uh, be back in Austin. It's not been a great weekend for Haas. Uh, Disappoint well, I'd say disappointing qualifying, but I think both drivers kind of knew it was going to be a hard uh, session for them, both out in Q1 with a car that looked a complete handful out on track. In the race, not much better. Kevin Magnussen came home P15, Roman Grosjean came home P17. I mean, how do you dress that one up? Long, long day, long afternoon, and uh, kind of expected, but I mean, I think we did a good job actually. And, you know, in our own little uh, championship, uh, because we we simply didn't have the pace this weekend from the beginning, and we kind of we knew we didn't we wouldn't have it. And uh, taking those things in consideration, I think we we performed a really good weekend, and uh, in the race we we managed a one-stop strategy, and we had damage in the car, so the pace, considering the damage, was you know a little bit not surprising, but you know kind of okay actually, and. Uh, you know, I think I think as a as a team, uh, operational wise, I think we did a really good job. Going into the race, Williams believed they had a car underneath them that could have seen them fight with Haas and Alfa Romeo. Whether that is more a reflection of how bad a weekend Alfa Romeo and Haas were having rather than a good weekend for Williams, 
is a moot point because ultimately they didn't have the car to compete. But what they did have was a car that was very equal between its two drivers and they were able to race each other hard. Kubica actually had the measure of George for most of the race, you've got to be said. Uh, he was ahead of him, certainly on track, for the majority of the afternoon. Not so, though, at the chequered flag, George finishing ahead uh, of Robert um, at the chequers. A disappointing weekend, again, for them, particularly when they hoped to be competing with Alpha uh, and with Haas. But some good, oh, and, and the garage is now falling down. But it's a good, hard racing between the Williams guys. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, the feeling in the car, laps to, already on you know, laps to the grid, was much better than yesterday. So uh, that's surprising. Um, then, uh, then yeah, I, I did have a good start, but uh, I, I felt like uh, I didn't have full deployment uh, of full power and uh, uh, on the first three quarters of the of the after the start going into turn one so i didn't gain anything uh, actually i was not in, in a very big rush into turn one as, as I, I didn't know what's going on i just felt on the last 200 meters that the engine start pulling properly uh, then managed to make good decisions in the battles you know there was a lot of going on and uh, I gained a couple of positions or so three uh, first thing uh, was okay but we we did have a long stop on the first pit stop with I think problem with the rear right or rear left and then uh, yeah George uh, managed to get in front of me due to this long pit stop and then I managed to overtake him and uh, yeah then we have to stop for because of the slow puncture. So that is your lot from Paddock Pass here in Mexico City. The pack up is in full swing because we fly out to Austin, Texas tomorrow lunchtime. Uh, seven days until the next race. Cannot wait to be in Austin Circuit, the Americas. Such a great race, such a great place. Uh, cannot wait to be back. It is now raining, so let's wrap this thing up uh, and get out of here. Thanks for following along. Love this place. What, what a brilliant city, what a brilliant race. It always proves to be. Um, we will miss Mexico. We can't wait to come back next year. Join us, though, uh, next week, Circuit the Americas, American Grand Prix, where Lewis Hamilton is hoping to wrap up that sixth Formula One World Championship. For now, though, that's your lot. <laughs>